Hi, this is Runa and you're listening to the Chainsmakers podcast where we share tips, insight, tools and stories from other Chainsmakers designed to motivate you to become the change you want to see in your world. Make sure you join our Chainsmakers community at runamagnus.com forward slash podcast. And now, this is your time to sit back, relax and enjoy. Oh, hello darling listeners of the James Megas podcast. I am super excited for the, the conversations that I'm going to be having today. We're going to be talking to a passionate book lover, not only loving reading books, but actually helping people to write books. And Jackie Lane, all the way from Australia, is on the line here. And I'm really excited to have a conversation with her today. Particularly because at the moment, I am co-writing my second book, The Story of Boxes, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where we are observing all the different boxes that we human beings tend to put ourselves into and others into. And some of them are actually quite limiting and quite isolating us from others. And so this is a huge thing for me. So how I'm going to be doing that because of course I want to make a difference as I'm writing this book and I want people to understand it and I want people to get it and I want to get it out there. You know, I'm no different than any other author. So here I have the person to talk to when it comes to writing a book and publishing it. So Jackie, thank you so much for being on the Change Makers podcast. Oh, very, very happy to be here. And the mission of the book advisor, which is my business is to change the world one book at a time. So there you are. Oh yeah. You're a change maker. (laughs) That's what you are. Yeah, exactly. I want to go directly into my first question. Why is it so important for you to use books to change the world? Well, interestingly, and I, and I say books as an old fashioned printed books, actually. So I'm, you know, the world is now into eBooks, but in fact, um, they're now tapering off as a form of engagement. So I talk about, when I talk about books, I'm talking about the printed hard copy books. I am a child of books. I grew up reading them. My favourite books were Winnie the Pooh, Beatrix Potter. Books help you travel to a place from your desk or your chair or your lounge room. And it doesn't matter where you are or what the book is. A book helps you take you to another place. So for me, books have always been part of how I live and breathe and become a writer and a publisher because I'm just so passionate about the ability of books to transform people and to articulate ideas. Yeah. Earlier, before I pressed the record button, I found out that you were from New Zealand. Yes. The number one country on my bucket list. This is interesting. This, you say... The reading books have always been, it's part of your DNA almost. Mm. Is that something that is, is that a common thing for New Zealanders? That be, <laughs> now I'm just asking because of, yeah, I'm just curious here regarding books and cultures. And, yeah. um, look, I don't think it's particularly a New Zealand thing. I have three older brothers and I don't really think any of them really particularly read books. Okay. But I do think, I think a really important thing for me when I was growing up is in New Zealand, we have Maori legends. So the Maori are the original indigenous inhabitants of yeah. New Zealand. And now I live in Australia and we have the Aboriginal culture. And both those cultures are steeped in story. They have long, long stories and essentially books are stories Mm -hmm. and so I grew up understanding and knowing that the Maori legends of Maui and how he fished up New Zealand and when I came to Australia 30 years later the Aboriginal song lines of Australia are effectively the history of this country Mm -hmm. go back 40 50,000 years so human beings are stories the way we communicate the way we understand each other is through stories and books put that into words as opposed to a verbal verbal thing so I think very deeply I've always been affected by communicating through story and books printed books do that oh absolutely they do and yeah you're right we do connect through stories and it's a transformational thing to listen to a story and relate to a story and see mm. yourself in that story or or not 
or trying to building up that emotional connections between another person. And so what do you see? Now I'm writing. I mean, I'm writing <laughs> the, the, the story of Foxy. Say, come on. In. And I'm Nick Haynes, my co-writer, writing these boxes. No, no, sorry. Writing the stories of boxes. I've really, I'm in a deep transition at the moment, going through all these stories and look at all of these. What do you see when you are writing a, a book? Like, like, just like what I'm on. So, okay. So, so, so when, I, when I'm trying to find those stories, can you give me? Yes, I can. Yeah. I think of you really important. So what most people do when they think, oh, I want to write a book or I have a story to share, mm. think, right, I'm going to write everything I know. Here's my story. I'm going to write it. And, and I love that when someone says that to me and often it's a taxi driver or somebody I bump into into the street. And, and then my first response now is, well, that's great. It's great you've got a story to share. Now, can you just put your story to one side and have a really long think about who you're talking to, who you're sharing your story with and what are their challenges and how is your story going to help them with what their challenges are. Mm. So you almost have to put yourself aside for a moment or a long time and really focus on the person that you're trying to share with. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in their shoes and say, of all the stories you have, because you have lots of them, we all have lots of them, but but what's the thing that's the most important or the, the biggest challenge or the biggest thing that you would like to share with that person and really understand what their challenge is and then match up what you have to say with their challenge. And if you get that match up right, you've got a bestseller, I think. Yeah. So it's really in marketing terms, it's really about your target group. Oh, totally. So I talk a lot in the book advisor about target audience. Who's your target audience? Let's sit down and really nut that out yeah. because unless you really deeply understand the challenges that, of the people that you wanted to share your story with, you're not going to share the right stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, not- yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, it's not really about you. It's about Correct. them. Then it's about what it gives you to be able to share it to them so that you continue with your writing. It has to be something that is, you keep your passion alive. And oh, I, I think it's even more precise than that. I yeah. think that all of us have a lot of different experiences and knowledge. Yeah. So it's more about being very specific about... Of all the stuff that you could share, Mm -hmm. A, what's the most important to you and what do you think you really have deep knowledge and insight about? And then actually standing back from that and saying, well, who do I want to share that with? Who's the group of people and what really, what challenges do they face? How does my experience and insight help them with their challenges. So like writing a book is not a one-way conversation. It's, it's a relationship. And mm-hmm. I think in most people's cases, if they don't think about it like that, they're just trying to blurt out what they know with no consideration at all for mm-hmm. what people need. Mm, yeah. How many books have you, have you published or been part of? Okay, so I've got kind of a couple of different publishing and writing hats on. So yeah. I've been a publisher for about 25 years. So I've yeah. published over 400 books. Wow. And I have written now 19 books. Oh, la, la. And I'm in the process of writing three at the moment and I have a, another two that I have to get on to next year. Wow. That is amazing. So in your own journey of writing your book, what have you told yourself in the times of when you, I know all writers have that writer's block. I even think that it doesn't matter how good of a writer you are, it, it's going to happen. I think so anyway. You can you correct me if I'm wrong. What have you done to keep yourself motivated to continue and finish the book? Because I bet there's so many um, that started a book but yeah. haven't finished. Yeah, and I, well, I think it's a really interesting question. So firstly, do I get writer's block? Well, maybe. <laughs> My biggest challenge actually is I do a lot of research. So I'm, I'm a Virgo, so I do all this research and writing and I get really well prepared and I have a pretty clear idea about what I want to write. 
Mm. But the hardest thing of all for me is to open up a new Word document and to write the first paragraph. I mean, and this book could be a book that's 5,000 words or, Mm. you know, 100,000 words. And I've written both those sorts of sizes of books. The hardest thing is to open up a Word document and write the first paragraph. So it's not writer's block per se. It's more about clarity. It's more about being really clear about starting. So I've developed a whole range of techniques to help me get over that. Wow. Anything you can yeah. share, just a tiny secret. Oh, yeah. T- and they're not, they're not great secrets. So a really important thing is work on a chapter outline. Don't start writing until mm-hmm. you've actually created a very clear outline of what you want to write. Mm-hmm. Because most people fail to complete their book because they start writing without any clear direction about what they're writing about. Yeah. So I do, and I advise everybody that I work with, that we're not going to start writing anything until we've worked out what it is you have to say, who your target audience is, matching the two things up, and then let's create a content outline. And let's work on that until we've got that right and then work out on the content of each of the chapters. And then then once you've got all that right, and that might take months, Mm -hmm. but once you've got that right, when you open up that first Word document, you know exactly where you're going. Mm -hmm. You've done all the thinking And you're kind of busting to get it out Mm. as opposed to opening up a document and thinking, oh, I'm just going to write because I feel like writing today. Mm -hmm. And then in three days' time, you might not feel like writing. Yeah, yeah. So have a really clear content outline before you start writing. Yeah, I agree with you. I absolutely, <laughs> this is, I agree with you. And I, I would say exactly the same thing. I did that with my first book and I'm doing that yep. now with my second book. And it's like, it's the guideline. Clarity. It's very, and it's very hard to do because what it requires you to do is lot, do a lot of the thinking up front. Yeah. You know, and that's, if you're going to finish and have a good book, mm. you need to think more up front rather than write. Speaking of which, and then here comes another question that I, I've thought about a lot and you know all of these really good bestsellers out there books that are really capturing people's hearts and and they they refer the book to others because they want other people to experience what they experienced somehow I don't know why I always think that there must be so many books out there who have similar content or are just as inspiring or just as transformational for people to to read, but they don't get somehow into other people's hands. And as a result Mm. of that, they are not making the impact that they should have all the ability to do so. Yeah. So what do you see that, what is that extra knot that authors need to think about? Yeah, very good question. And it goes back to this whole thing about thinking and planning about your book. Mm. So with self-publishing 2.0 these days, you know, lots more people are writing and publishing their own books. But the really mission critical thing is that to get your book above there, whether it's on Amazon or Kindle or wherever, Mm. is you also have to become the marketer. You have to promote your book. Mm-hmm. And you now have the capacity to do that. But it actually means that while you're writing your book, you have to build a book community. You know, there's a, you know it takes a community to raise a child. Well, it takes a community to actually market a book. Oh, yeah. And so I advise people that I work with, we start building their book community a good six months out before their book's even published. Yeah. So you have to be very tactical and strategic. Mm -hmm. about what you want to do to market your book. And some people don't want to market their book at all. And other people actually want to really get into that. So I think being very honest and open with yourself about how much effort you're going to put into marketing your book. Mm -hmm. And if you want to put the effort in, you can absolutely blitz it and get your book out there and do really, really well. But it's up to you. And there are any number of places that want to take your money and not do much work for it. But you have to learn quite a lot about marketing and and how to promote your book. And it's not necessarily a lot of time or a lot of money. It's more about tactics and strategy. 
Yeah. So we go back to what you said about marketing. Mm. Marketing your book is like marketing a product. Yeah, exactly. What is your overall, I mean, I'm just giving you the <laughs> question like, but percentage wise, out of all the books that you published, all of the self-publishing books, um, do you have an, you know, do you have any, like any references of how the how many of them have really gone into the great part of marketing and, and how many have not? So. Look, most people who self-publish don't actually want to market. Most people, yeah. And as a result because, of that, it's just there. Uh, because mostly they've got another job where well, they've got a p- job that's paying them. Yeah. So they don't have the time. A very large proportion of the people that I work for are using it as a marketing tool for themselves. Mm-hmm. So they're not necessarily looking to sell tens of thousands, but they're looking at it as a, as a branding exercise, yeah. as a personal branding exercise or a business promotional tool. Yeah. And again, that comes back to being very clear about what your objectives are when you write your and publish your book. Yeah. I don't work in the space of novels or made up stories, so I'm very much in the business space. Yeah. So of course I would be I'm attracting people who are senior level executives, consultants who want to share their knowledge but also want to build their personal brand and their business brand. So I'm in a very, you know, very specific part of that world. Yeah. Of course they want to sell their book, but it's not necessarily the primary objective for them. Mm-hmm. But for me, what empowers me is that I'm working with people who have knowledge that they want to share and they're very clear and we can help them get very clear about who they want to share it with and why it's going to make a difference. Yeah, why it's going to make a difference. Because why it always comes back to why it's going to make a difference. Always comes back to that, yeah. So for the change makers out there who are listening, where should they go? to get more information about your work and how they can contact you, Jackie. I know okay, so, into the show notes, but tell us as well. Okay. So my business is called The Book Advisor and you can go to the www.thebookadvisor.com.au and, and basically I mentor business people through their business book journey. Hmm. And I'm on LinkedIn and there's tons and tons of articles that are, are freely accessible both on my website and on LinkedIn about all the steps you need to take about tips and tricks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I take the approach that I'm very knowledgeable about where I'm at because I'm a business publisher and I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. So I habitate this very unusual space where I know the industry and I know the business and I also write. And I want to share that knowledge. I genuinely want to share that with people. tons of free information. Mm-hmm. and I'm available you know I'm, I'm very welcoming and friendly I come from New Zealand after yeah, all exactly comes from New Zealand and I just found out those are the the friendly people I knew yeah why. now I know why I always like New Zealanders yeah finally final question I know that you're really passionate about writing and helping people to write their books but what I what is the change that you want to see in your world well personally given that I'm living in Australia I would like Australia to change its policy on taking immigrants into this country and refugees because currently this country has agreed to have refugees on offshore and island detention centres and there's about 2,000 of them and about 200 of them are children. Oh, my God. Nothing to do with books, but that's the real change I want to see. That's the real change. And then I want to ask you, what is your role in creating that change? I write to politicians. I'm part of Mm -hmm. a couple of human rights action groups. Um, I write stories about some of the refugees who are on those islands Mm -hmm. and I post them. I talk to friends and acquaintances who are less supportive of that point of view. Mm Mm-hmm to try and get them to understand because most of the people who are in offshore detention centres come from Afghanistan and Iran and Iraq. And in another part of my life, I spend quite a lot of time in the Middle East Mm -hmm. and have done for 20 years. So last year in October, I was in Iran for a month, Mm. um, working with young girls and school children in Iran. And Australia is a lovely country, but not a lot of people here have a great understanding of Middle East. Yeah. And they think that most people who are Muslims are terrorists. So I spend a large part of my non-writing time trying to bridge 
gaps in knowledge and information again sharing stories sharing stories exactly sharing stories to about. sharing stories sharing yeah. stories to help understanding really yeah. exactly jackie thank you so much for your insights to our listeners go to our page ronamagnus.com forward slash podcast and find out more how you can reach out to jackie write your own story and make the difference that you want to see in your world thank you so much jackie that's a pleasure thank you Was this podcast of value for you? I sure hope so. If so, feel free to share the love and give us your generous review on iTunes or Stitcher. And remember that you can always go to runamagnus.com to find out more about the change makers and how we can help you drive the change you want to see in your world.